reading from the Hebrew Bible in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1, 1 through 2 and 4 through 10. All the Israelite tribes came to David at Hebron and said, Listen, we are your very own flesh and bone. In the past, when Saul ruled over us, you were the one who led Israel out to war and back. What's more, the Lord told you, you will shepherd my people Israel, and you will be Israel's leader. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he ruled for 40 years. He ruled over Judah for seven and a half years in Hebron. He ruled 33 years over all Israel and Judah in Jerusalem. David occupied the fortress, so it was renamed David's city. David built a city around it from the earthen terraces inward. David grew increasingly powerful, and the Lord of heavenly forces was with him. Before we sing our next hymn, all the songs I picked, and especially for the sermon response, are hopefully related to Independence Day. And I started looking up things about these songs, and this one here was written by a fellow named Johns Walden Johnson. And... Uh, he was a, a lawyer, a diplomat, a professor, a writer, and a poet, and the first African leader of the NAACP. And this song was first written in 1899. His brother, who trained at the New England Conservatory of Music, he composed and performed in stage and music as operettas, and he wrote the melody for this. This was sung by the children of Jacksonville. And they continued to sing it and sing it. And 20 years later, it has been sung all over the South and among other parts of our country. This song here that we're about to sing is in 39 different Christian hymnals. And it is called, it is the, um, the NAACP dubbed it the Negro National Anthem. And the arrangement, I, th I think, is just beautiful. I was going to play it on the organ, but we'll do this on the piano. And uh, my colleagues up here are going to help us with this melody. And it's a very pretty melody, and it moves to it. So, with that, let us sing our second hymn. Let every voice and sing. Let every voice and sing. mentioned that um, I'm here because Pastor had had surgery and she's away for a while and recovering and we wish her well. And I forgot to mention that earlier. So the reading of the gospel. This um, particular piece is from Peter. For it is God's will that by doing right you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. 
Live as free men, and yet without using your freedom as a pretext for evil. But live as servants of God, honor all men, and love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the emperor. So being Independence Day, I spent a few weeks looking up what we might call independent songs, and I got really involved, and then I got confused. I said, here we are talking about independence, here we are talking about freedom, and here we are looking at what's going on in our country these days. But before I begin, who was, the, I'm gonna ask a few questions and you can blare out the answer and we were just here for fun. John, who was the only person to actually sign the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776? And only one person, who was that? Sure. That, no, <laughs> John Hancock. Others signed it in, uh, later on on August 2nd. All right, well, now that we know. Okay, um, the other one. And where was the independence sign? At the bottom of the page. Thanks. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, you got that. Um, so I spent a long time, and I noticed, I think even the past, uh, every song I think we'll be singing and you'll be hearing will have the word God. And to me, there's a relationship between obviously our government and God because we even put it into what? The Pledge of Allegiance, and there's been discussion <clears> of <throat> taking it out. But the song, the first one I looked at, let me get it here. Now these are my, see? This is how much, much work I've done. This, this is a sermon book here. All right, so. If you, do you have a favorite song? Do you have a favorite independence song? I looked this up and of course I found like 50 songs that are related to this. And I was looking, you know, that they had the Beach Boys listed, uh, Spirit of America, they had, of course, God Bless America, um, what were some of the main ones? They had Neil Diamond's America, you know that, This Is My Country, Tracy Atkins, who's wrote many, and Toby Keith wrote many of folk singers, apparently showed up more than anyone else in writing songs about America. And I, I found that very interesting. And I kept reading down and I saw a song, Firework. And I'm looking, I know this song, because on a radio I hear, um, this goes, cause baby, you're a, this is, this is written by the way by Katy Perry, a very famous singer. Cause baby, you're a firework. Come on, show them what you're worth. Make them, oh, ah, 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 you shoot the sky. Baby, you're a firework. And I'm reading this. I said, wait a minute. This is not appropriate. I am not going to. So then, in a few weeks later, I'm watching on and off the inauguration ceremony. The very end had Katie Perry singing fireworks. And it was a Beautiful display. It's in front of the Washington Monument. There all your water, you had all the candles lit up, and she's singing there, gorgeous. And fireworks were over top. And the president comes out, vice president, and they come out with their spouses, and they're on their ledge there watching on their balconies. And she's singing away. And I said, Oh, this is a great. And then the next day, I said, Wait a minute. I interpret this song this way. Why is that being sung for inauguration? So I looked it up. And having never listened to the verse because it's like lower key, and then she comes out, and da 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 da, and you hear that part of it. And the words are, did you ever feel like a plastic bag, drifting through the wind, wanting to start again? Did you ever feel, feel so paper thin like a house of cards, one blown from caving in? Did you ever feel already buried deep, six feet under, screams, but no one seems to hear a thing? Do you know that there is a chance for you? Because there's a spark in you. You just got to ignite the light and let it shine. Just own the right, like the 4th of July, because baby, you're a firework. And that was, you know, I was shocked. I said, that's beautiful. Wow. And now I understand the song. So now I understand why she sang it there, too. And it's all about, obviously, people without their freedoms. So in looking through, let's see if we know what the national anthem is. We know what it is today. What do we know about what it was before today? <clears throat> Did you ever hear of Hail Columbia? And Columbia was what they referred to, mm -hmm. I guess, 
the United States before we were the United States. So uh, the, words were, the words are by Philip File in 1789. And the music is by Joseph Hopkins in 1798, a few years ago. Not as old as our church, of course. We're much older than this declaration stuff. Uh, it, was, it was composed for the first inauguration of George Washington. And after it was called the President's March, then the lyrics, then the lyrics were added, there's Hail Columbia. It was the unofficial national anthem from 1789 until, take a guess, 1931. And that's when the Star Spangled Banner was officially the national anthem. It was also used for the president's ent entrance until replaced by Hail to the Chief. And now it is it's the entrance march or official song for the Vice President of the United States. And I'd like to take a minute, and again, I was going through all the lyrics and way down at the bottom, <laughs> it's, it says, listen with a joyful ear, with equal skill, with God-like power. And I said, okay, I'm gonna include this one. There's the word God again. But I'm just gonna play a little bit of this for you, just to see if you recognize it. This is the entrance for the vice president today. It's been for many, many years. <clears throat> if you don't mind, let me see if I can do this. Just go in the safari. trying to sing that as a national anthem. The next song I looked up, oh, speaking of flags, what did the flag, what did one flag say to the other? Nothing, it just went. <laughs> <laughs> so replacing that is the Star Spangled Banner written by Francis Scott Key, music by John Stafford Smith. Uh, the War of 1812 is going on and um, there was a, a Vice Admiral Alexander Cochrane who gave to the British Navy ships who commenced who went there firing at Fort McHenry. I'm sorry, let me move down here. Francis S. Scott, a Georgetown lawyer and these are things I never really realized. I knew he wrote this song. Along with British prisoner exchange agent, Colonel John Stewart, was there to negotiate the release of a friend. The American prisoner were on the British ship, this one prisoner with others. And after hours of negotiation, he got the release of Dr. William Beans, but they could not return to the Baltimore shore. And I skipped the part here. Um, they were at Fort McHenry, and the British were ready to bomb Baltimore or attack it. Washington, D.C. was burned just a month prior. And these two cities, um, in just form, they had just formed the United States, would mean the loss of two major coastal cities, both financial and political strongholds. Without them, the British could claim victory for the entire war. So, as, as Francis Scott Key thought he was about to leave, they said, no, you have to wait a while. And they said, why? We've been here several days already. He said, well, we're going to attack Fort Henry. And so after 24 hours of cannon fire and booms of explosions, Key awoke to a proud display of American patriotism. The flags were still standing, a sign that they were not going to stop 
fighting. And in the end, of course, they won that particular war and he, Scott was released. That morning he wrote notes in a future poem about this event because it occurred over the evening, over the night. And later that week, he finished that poem and named it Defense of Fort McHenry. On September 20th, the Baltimore Patriot published it. Keeg's Key's brother-in-law set the poem to music and published it under the name Star Spangled Banner, and it became sung throughout the country. And after 1889, it accompanied the flag raising by the Navy. Now, America, which we sang just earlier, um, the tune is taken from the United Kingdom's national anthem, God Save the Queen. And uh, I played that one time as a prelude because I had created my own little version of America. And, and the Congregationalist came up to me and said, you played God Save America. He said, how do you know that? He says, I know that, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, hey, I say to you, do you know the difference? And I guess you have the music, Pat. Um, just as this song was also referred to as our national anthem until the adoption of the Star Spangled Banner. So here you have <clears throat> Columbia, you have America, Smith wrote the lyrics in 1831 while a student at the Andover Theology Seminary in Andover, Massachusetts. And he gave it to Mason, and it was performed in public at Children's Independence Day celebration at Park Street Church in Boston and in the year 1831. And the first publication of America was in 1832. And I just want to check one thing here to see if Pat, do you have that in the music there? I just, um, here's your quiz, number three, which is which? I'm going to play the beginning of both and see if you know the difference. Okay. Gary, B, that has special chords in there. That's God Save the Queen. All right, moving forward. Oh, I did forget. In 1843, um, a fellow named A.G. Duncan, 1843, wrote, he was, a, he was an abolitionist, and he wrote a verse. He wrote a whole song. The verses. He wrote a whole different verse of this song. My country tis of the stronghold of slavery, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, where men man's rights deride, for every mountainside thy deeds shall ring. My native country thee, where all men are born free, if whites their skin. I love thy hills and dales, the mounts and pleasant vales, but hate thy Negro sails as foolish sin. Moving along, our Father's God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Soon may our land be bright with holy freedom's right. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. It comes the joyful day when tyranny's proud sway, stern as the grave shall to the ground be hurled and freedom's flag unfurled, shall wave throughout the world o'er every slave. Over. And it has a little bit more. So I found that really interesting. I never knew that, that here was a whole nother verse of that song. My last song, and, and I'm so intrigued by this because every time I read something, it's like, there's no song that was written just to be written, kind of an outgoing song. God Bless America is probably the most controversial song in this country, from what I read. 
We all know Ring Berlin, and we know he wrote this well in 1918 while serving in the army at Camp Upton in is it Yafank, New York. I hope I pronounced that correctly. He was Jew he's Jewish and arrived in the United States when he was five. Felt it was time to revive it as a peace song with the rise of Adolf Hitler in 1938. It was introduced as an Armistice Day broadcast in 1938, sung by Kate Smith, right? Yeah. <clears throat> he made a few changes. To the right might have been considered a call to the political right, so he substituted through the night. He also provided an introduction that is now rarely heard. And it goes like this. That? <laughs> God bless America, the intro there. Just give me a B if I can reach it. Mm, okay. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. And you will hear the rest of this for the, as the postlude. <clears throat> Woody Guthrie, and we've all heard, I think, of Woody Guthrie. He criticized this song. And in 1940, he wrote, This Land is Your Land, which we'll be singing later also originally titled, God Blessed America for Me. <laughs> I couldn't find out much more about that, but I do know the, the Ku Klux Klan also protested against this song due to its authorship by a Jewish immigrant. Who knew? There has been a lot of controversy regarding this song, and yet, and yet it is and has been used in many sporting events, and it will be sung by the meeting house later. A couple of things, um, that was the introduction. It was, I mean, it's been used for so many things. I know that now, again, Yankee Stadium uses it every seventh inning. They play God Bless America. And here again, as I say, it's a controversial song. I don't know what happened. And I want to find out, maybe one of you knows, but something happened, again, political, and they will not play Kate, Kate Smith's version again. Somebody will sing it. So there again is another example of this song, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. And it's been played at many sporting events. There's a list here of things it's done. So that's, that's my, those are my main songs. They all have the word God, and there's gotta be a belief. These people out there writing these songs between a country and, and God. Let me just finish here. And yet, you wonder, just, you know, in closing, I have Stephen Dixon singing a song, but before that, there's a new song that came out by Tim McGraw. Um, it's called, it's called, what is it called? Undivided. And I kind of wanted to end with this. It says, you see, Billy got picked up, picked on at school for things he couldn't change. He tried his best to play it cool, but in the seventh grade, you either fit right in or you don't fit. And that's just the cold, hard truth. I wish that I'd been friend, been the friend that Billy never knew. But the course, the main refrain is, I think it's time to come together. And I can make, and you and I can make a change. Maybe we can make a difference, make the world a better place. Look around and love somebody. We've been hateful long enough. Let the good Lord reunite us till this country that we love is undivided. And I think in a, you know, for a short country song that tells a story, it's beautiful. It, it really works. And, and I want to say before he, he sings that I got, I got held up with, um, with um, freedom, independence, especially independence and what that really means throughout this country. And as, as much as we love this country, most of us love this country, and as much as you know, we support one another politically as best we can. It, it's just there's a lot going on for people, a lot of things. 
I do want to ask you this, though. Speaking of the Star Spangled Banner, what are the last spoken words of the Star Spangled Banner? Play ball! Play ball! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, Stephen, are you available to close out my little message here? <laughs> Thank you, Steve.